Hello there, I'm Dawn Brooks, long time no see, I haven't recorded anything for a little while. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you I'm very excited that um, Murder at the Christmas Market is now available as an audiobook. It will be heading to the stores very soon. Have, having said that, I've got a special offer for you via my own pay, uh, pay hip shop. But if you watch to the end of the video, you will see, you will find a code which will give you 20% off that um, already discounted price. Just watch to the end of the video and you will get a very special code which will give give you the 20 percent off but watch watch the first few minutes five minutes of the video because that will tell you whether you think you're going to like this audio book or not because you might not although i can't imagine that you wouldn't i'll speak to you soon it was only for a few nights marjorie told herself after scanning the final guest bedroom she was satisfied that they were prepared for the house guests the doorbell rang but it didn't just ring once, it rang constantly. There was nothing more irritating than a person repeatedly ringing a doorbell without giving the building's occupants time to answer. It can't be Edna. Her train's not due in until lunchtime and Horace promised to pick her up. The bell stopped momentarily, but rang again while Marjorie crossed the gallery on the first floor. She took the main staircase down to the ground floor, noticing that even the banisters had been polished. Her housekeeper had done an excellent job. All right, I'm coming. Marjorie heard Jeremy before seeing him striding towards the front door. Where's your housekeeper? He snapped, seeing her descending the stairs. Hiding if she's got any sense, Marjorie thought, but answered, She's been busy preparing rooms for your guests. Oh, I don't know how I let you talk me into this, Jeremy. It really is too much. And if all your business colleagues are going to be as impatient as the whoever that is outside, you can find alternative arrangements. Marjorie felt annoyance rising in her chest when the bell rang yet again. Her son had assured her people wouldn't be arriving until later. Jeremy swatted away her protest with a wave of the hand, using the other to open the door with such force it almost hit the wall. A harsh and chilly wind drove into the hallway, causing Jeremy to almost lose his footing. Oh, it's you, Marcus, he said. The man called Marcus, pressed one more time with his trigger finger before barking, This doorbell doesn't work. I've been standing here for ages. Another loud ding-dong, ding-dong chime rang through the hallway. Marjorie glared from behind Jeremy. As you can hear, the bell is working, so if you could remove your finger, she replied. Well, I couldn't hear it from outside. That's because doorbells are meant to be heard inside, thought Marjorie. Let me introduce you to my mother, said Jeremy letting the man in and pushing the door closed against the resistant gale blowing outside. Marjorie felt her forehead wrinkle with confusion. Who was this Marcus person? She scanned the guest list she had memorised in her head, but didn't recall anyone going by that name. We have allocated all the spare rooms. Jeremy took the man's overcoat and hung it on the coat rack in the hallway. Marcus was around six foot and wore a navy blue pinstripe suit with matching tie. His dyed black hair parted in the centre, hung down over his eyebrows. Mother, this is Marcus Singleton, our chief negotiator. Marcus, this is my mother, Lady Marjorie Snellthorpe. Chief negotiator since when? Marjorie took the man's outstretched hand, noticing long stubby fingers which felt cold to the touch. How do you do? she said. Very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Lady Snellthorpe. Whilst his tone was warm, his eyes quickly moved away from her, greedily scanning the hallway in a way which made her feel uncomfortable. This is very grand. It will do nicely, Jeremy. Shall we look around? Marcus Singleton had only been through the door a few minutes, and he was already grating on Marjorie's frayed nerves. Jeremy cleared his throat. <clears throat> Perhaps you'd like a drink first. It's a bit early in the day for me, said Marcus. 
There will be a tray of tea and coffee in the sitting room, Marjorie said, rolling her eyes towards Jeremy. Follow me. Marjorie's son led them towards the large oak door behind the stairs. Through there, he said, allowing Marcus to pass ahead. His name is not on the list, Marjorie hissed at Jeremy as they followed. Jeremy spoke loud enough for Marcus to hear. Marcus isn't staying overnight, mother. He's heading up the business negotiations, though, so he will join you and our guests for meals and outings. I asked him to come early because he wants to get to know the lie of the land and make sure the kitchen staff are well prepared. Marjorie's temper was fraying even more than her nerves. She stopped dead in her tracks, not knowing which of Jeremy's revelations to address first. Marcus was helping himself to coffee from the pot.